So I begged their party chair, the Democrats' party chair, uh, to put forth another candidate because uh, Mr. Nerona, unfortunately, is legally prohibited from doing the jobs for Rhode Island that are most important to Rhode Island voters. What do you mean? As the U.S. attorney who made the Google settlement, negotiated it, and made it, and awarded the money to a third party uh, in that settlement, uh, the state of Rhode Island, the state police, the state attorney general's office. Well, he didn't award that money. The, the, the federal government did. He was the federal government's counsel in well, the matter. Well, 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 the judge did. These, 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 there was no judge. Well, this is this is a settlement. It was not a court settlement because no indictment had been filed. It was an out-of-court, non-criminal settlement. It was not approved by a judge. And Jeff Sessions spoke about this in his confirmation hearings. Mm -hmm. When a U.S. attorney or a state attorney general um, accepts a settlement from a, a large entity, large amounts of money, mm -hmm. it's in fact not in strict accordance with the law, it's sort of a, a payment to not fully enforce the law and it sets a, not a binding precedent, but a precedent of expectation for other companies behaving similarly. So in the case of the Google deal, it was a sting operation that carefully recorded a half billion dollars worth of unlawful pill sales being eagerly um, enacted by Google executives. And that's just what was in the sting. We know there was a tiny fraction of what was going on in real life with mm -hmm. real pills being sold that way. And the money was awarded to a third party, the state of Rhode Island's Municipal Police Department, State Police and Attorney General's Office, and Peter Nerona. In the was, town of North Providence. Yeah. And the, the, the Peter Nerona was counsel in that, which means he has an ongoing duty to the federal government not to discuss the matter. And he has got a massive conflict of interest as the U.S. government's counsel in the matter, he, they can't then go represent Rhode Island in the same matter. And so you'll see in this uh, mess with Pat Morgan. He's no longer the U.S. attorney. No, the duty is ongoing. A conflict of interest is a conflict of interest. You actually can't go and represent another side and say, well, I'm no longer working for them. That's conflict of interest. He's legally prohibited from speaking about the matter. Other than your analysis, what, what, who would you credit to, to, to support your your thesis here. I think we should, you can look at his answers when he's asked about what he would do with turning over the Google documents. Sure, well, well. He, he, look at his answer, it's a big nothing burger because he's not allowed to turn those over. Well, he's he not in custody of the Google documents, he's no longer the U.S. attorney. When he becomes the state attorney general, should he, and he won't, right. because he cannot. He talked to me last week about having more transparency with those documents than, than Peter, Peter Kim Martin has offered. He, He's saying the right words, but in terms of what he can actually do, and I think somebody should ask him, are you legally allowed to discuss matters that, uh, where you're counsel for the United States, even though you're no longer, do you have an ongoing duty of secrecy? And yes, he does, for matters that are classified, including um, negotiations. Uh, do you have a uh, conflict of interest representing a party in a matter where you represented another party in the same matter. Yes, he does have a conflict of interest. You can't do it. At the end of the day, he's trying to have won the money as the U.S. Attorney, give some of it, a big chunk of it, to the Rhode Island State Attorney General's office in a less there than were separate matter, and then go receive it. They were, can't do they, that. There That's were separate investigative parties who proratedly earned that dough to suggest that he was Santa Claus and gave it out to these other communities is a little misleading, don't you think? No, I don't think it's misleading. Um, it was a federal investigation that was um, so criminal involving opiate pills that if a street dealer were caught with 1% of that, he would have gone to prison for life. There would have been no non-criminal plea for money. All right, well, listen, um, we're out of time. It doesn't mean the conversation's over. Uh, let, me, uh, let me get the other candidates response and perhaps you guys will have a chance to talk about it. Nice to meet you. We'll be back in touch. Yeah, thanks. All right, final word when we come back. Stay with us. I thought the Compassion Party was about promotion of cannabis. Um, we'll, uh, we'll do a little homework on, on our last candidate's thesis and uh, like I said, we'll, we'll get back to you.